Hey there, Heather Ho there, and welcome back to Mike's Art Reviews, everybody. My name is Michael. I used to say I'm a former bartender from the Kalamazoo area, but I'm back into the business, officially. Uh, starting on the 17th of March, I will be back to bartending like normal. We're gonna drop right into this episode because I got my COVID booster yesterday, and it's kicking my ass, and I want to go lay down and really shouldn't be drinking cocktails. So today we're gonna go ahead and make a variation on a whiskey sour that I call a leprechaun, which is one of two specials that I will be showcasing, uh, as it were, at the bartending event that I'll be doing on St. Patrick's Day. Requires a couple of ingredients, uh, Midori melon liqueur, uh, Irish whiskey, of course. I'm gonna use Jameson, I think it works best here. Uh, I'm gonna use a honey syrup. This is a green tea honey syrup, so sub the water and honey syrup for a cold brew green tea, about 24 hours rested. And then you're gonna need some citrus juice, both lemon and lime. Without further ado, let's just go ahead and get started. This is an original spec for uh, sort of a themed whiskey sour, so there's not any history to talk about. Kind of nice actually just being able to come on here and make a drink real quick and make like a five minute video. We're gonna do three quarters of an ounce, uh, up to an ounce of our honey syrup. Next up, we're gonna get our citrus juices. We're gonna need to uh, start off half an ounce of lemon juice and half an ounce of lime juice. Pour that right in. Next up, we need an ounce of our melon liqueur. Uh, the only one that I know of is Midori. Uh, it's a Japanese liqueur, it's pretty good. I think its flavor palette is meant to be somewhere between musk melons and honeydew. It's good stuff. And then finally, one and a half ounces of our Irish whiskey. We will add some ice to that, give it a shake, and then serve it in a rocks glass. As always, I'm gonna stick with one cube cracked, one cube whole, our cube in. Tap that shut, shake it for 12 to 15 seconds to chill and dilute. Ooh, cold stuff. To serve this, we're gonna take a double rocks glass in this case. I'm gonna fill that up with some crushed ice. I suppose in this case, it's definitely cracked. We'll go ahead and double strain this over that ice. And then to complete the drink, we'll go ahead and garnish it with just a simple wheel of lemon. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen, that is a leprechaun. Hasty creation aside, we've gone ahead and cleaned up our uh, work surface. Let's go ahead and give a leprechaun a taste. That sounded a little more sus than I wanted it to be. Yeah, that's good. So it's interesting because the way melon reads when you use Midori as opposed to something like melon juice, which was theoretically possible here, it's it's this kind of candy-like melon. Um, and even though it's a liqueur, you gotta stack it up with other things to give it the necessary backbone to read like melon of any kind, candy or otherwise. We are using that citrus and then the sweetness from the honey syrup to we sort of give it that necessary backbone. It's really one note without the citrus to lighten it up. And in my testing, I found lemon alone wasn't enough. Adding the half an ounce of lime juice, like split, split, split basing the citrus, it's, it's awesome. It's just the right amount of tart and sweet to get that kind of nice semi-sour feel to it. It's, it's interesting, it's really cool. In a way, it reads kind of like apple, actually, alongside you know, the impact of that whiskey, the caramel honey flavors that that's bringing and the oak. Uh, and then probably actually some of the green tea coming from that honey syrup. It doesn't really show super loud. You can get the impact of the green tea base of the syrup specifically if you look for it. Yeah, there's like a mild tea, like astringency built into it. It's fascinating. It is kind of a one note party cocktail. That's sort of the point. It doesn't have a great evolution, but the thing is it's so much happening at one time that if you slow down, and, and just look for different things or like see how it changes on each sip. You can find each part of, of the cocktail and what's changing up uh, how how it's tasting. What's, you know, modifying what. I do an experiment live real quick because I thought about doing this before. So do two dashes of orange bitters and give that a quick stir to see how that changes it. Part of me thinks it's a little bit on the sweet side and some bitters will pull that back and add a little bit of complexity that might otherwise be missing. Oh, oh, fascinating. 
Tastes like orange blossom water now. <laughs> like not as bitter, but like very distinctly like not like a, not a candy orange, but like a floral orange. A very sweet floral orange, but a floral orange nonetheless. That's weird. That's cool. I like that actually. I think I'm gonna make that part of the f official spec. This this was a spur of the moment decision, but I think I'm gonna make that part of the spec. So if you're looking for a green cocktail to go ahead and serve to your folks, friends, family, X, Y, Z, whatever the fuck this St. Patrick's Day, go ahead and give them a nice lime green leprechaun. You know, it's a great seasonal drink. It's got that nice, you know, green touch to it. It's very simple, even if it has a couple of specialty ingredients in it. And yes, the job done. It's an effective, interesting, balanced sour. Thank you all so much for watching. Hopefully you guys enjoyed and you are having some fun with your St. Patrick's Day festivities, even if you're watching this, you know, the week prior to it. Thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video where we do one more special on uh, St. Patrick's Day and a St. Patrick's Day cocktail, specifically next Friday. Have a good one, drink responsibly, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye. Thank you.